everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax the Golfie team, and we've got Lindsay Foster with uh, Foster Living, and this is not just real estate. So we're going to be talking about some things that's happening in the real estate world. Lindsay, Rob, how's your week been going? My week's been going. I was reading some of the new NAR stats, and I always go back to some consumer polls. And I'm going to hit you with an oldie that remains the same. Did you know that real estate agents are ranked second only to used car salesmen in consumer polls for untrustworthiness? That's sad. People hate realtors. Uh, you know what it is? They hate realtors. They don't realize how hard we work. And they'd see that, uh, you know, we're driving all these nice cars. But, hey, everybody, just think about this. Realtors, they finance themselves to the nines. So uh, they look good, but they're probably broke. But but we do work hard. We do, <laughs> we do work hard. So I'm just trying to just trying to cover up, put a Band-Aid on uh, our, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Our, uh, not reputation, but our... Uh, our industry yeah, and you can only look out for yourself i had a bad dentist once right there so, you go yeah. but i'll tell you this people hate realtors but according to reddit oh shit people hate you yeah uh, can i yeah. read you a couple mean tweets to get okay. us kicked off all Rob, right Robbie be gentle be gentle mm, i won't be and neither was this guy steve steve says <clears throat> whenever i have dealt with a real estate agent in my personal life i have found them arrogant and self-serving they're always trying to sell their expertise and would stab their grandma for a commission. So I'll start with this. Stabbed any grandmas recently? No, no, no. But you know what? I'll tell you something. He's probably looking at all the other agents and, and it's probably a part-time agent that he dealt with. There's no way a full-time uh, agent that's in this business would do that. But I do know I'm going to tell you something. This is a little quick short story. So uh, this agent, uh, not in the Hamilton Halton market, but more Niagara, he went on to an appointment to list his uncle's house. And he was trying to sell his uncle that he had this, you know, extravagant uh, marketing and this and that. And he was going to, he, he asked him for 7% uh, commission. Guess what? That guy never got any of the family business anymore. Not only his uncle, but all the cousins, all the other aunts and uncles. He blew it. And I'm like, what an idiot. Like, I, I get it. I get it. Like, hey, if you got family, you have to do something. You have to you have to work with them and give them, give them a deal. And that, that's how I operate. Oh, and to be clear, everyone, 7% is not a fucking deal. No. That's highway robbery. <laughs> it is. There better be a helicopter it is. It is. in your drone media. Oh, absolutely. He deserved rate, right? not to get anybody's business. Sure. That he And he blew that forever. Well, and I've got more mean tweets for you. But on that note, I mean, most industries have the 90% and the 10%. That's right. And it's an important, there's a fine line between quality and quantity. Yeah. You want the quality, but you also want someone that does this more than once a quarter because we're dealing with people's biggest fucking investments. No shit. No you should shit. be doing it every day. Yeah, yeah. On that note, <clears throat> by the way, fuck you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> here's one from Carol. All realtors are crooks. They should be paid a flat rate, not a percentage of sale price. As prices increase, these bandits made a fortune. Have you seen the houses they live in, the clothes they wear, and the cars they drive before we get anywhere. You like these? Oh, look at the shoes. These are Seychelles. You no can buy kidding. them online for wow. 120 US. And I got these puppies at Mission Thrift for $8 while I was shopping for See staging that? furniture. See that? This is an embroidered heel. And uh, I, they look I, awesome. I nice. don't have this money Carol's talking about. Do you want to comment on the crooks? So, okay, Carol, listen. How about this? Yeah, I'll give you a flat rate, but do you want to pay for the staging, all the marketing and everything? And guess what? And if we don't sell the house, you still have to pay for that. I assume all the uh, expenses and uh, with the overpriced house that you want and that doesn't sell. So I take the risk. It doesn't cost you a dime unless I sell it. So you know what? I'm sorry, but you know, we work hard. We spend a lot of money to get your, get the price that you want and we try the price that you want, but we don't uh, normally get it. Uh, get we don't, and we don't get it because you want too much. And I spent maybe five five thousand dollars trying to sell your house. Who pays for that? Well, and have you seen those those TikTok videos about like if you if you want to pay twenty dollars for the cake, here's the ingredients, right? You're paying for my experience, but in our case, the experience 
isn't necessarily intangible. We've spent, in your case, decades, in my case, a decade building staging repertoires, building relationships with media people. Oh, yeah. So we know we're only in your house for three hours because yeah. you've got two fucking dogs that yeah. are slobbing all yeah. over the wall. Yeah. So yeah. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, so f- fuck you, Carol. Uh, <laughs> here's another one. I'm not going to tell you who it's from. It's just a real quick quip. Rob Golfie's in the mob. Oh, brother. Have you heard that before? Yeah. You know what? Because uh, I've got Italian heritage, everybody thinks that I'm part of the mob. Like, come on, guys, wake up. Listen. Like, really, if I was in the mob, you'd be dead now. Okay? So. When's the last time it. you had dinner at the Chuckadero? Chuck it? No, I haven't. No, oh, then you're not in the fucking no, mob. No, no, but no. I was. But there, there, there are there, there were there were mob hangouts in uh, in uh, the Hamilton area that uh, you'd see the odd one coming in. So I try not to stay too close to them in case somebody was trying to make a hit on them. So mm, I, I, think, I stayed clear. I think the Italian mobs really run its course in our city. There's there's a couple. Uh, of, I think, I think, I think the I think the baby the baby mobsters are around still. I think yeah. The, yeah, I think the last generation of mobsters are around. Uh. I think I think it'll be around for just maybe another. I think to the next flush of people, and that's it. I think you're right. It It is almost gone. It is almost gone. Yeah, well, there's so much immigration happening, too. There's other people cornering these markets. I got to tell you, whenever I would get out of that big old suburban, I'm going back to it. I loved it so much. People would always ask me if the president was in the back. And I'd be like, do I not look Italian enough to drive this vehicle? This is supposed to be my Carmela moment. There you go. And you're robbing me of it. And it's because I'm a whole ass mungy cake. No one will ever accuse me of being in the mob. There you go. See that? And you probably could be a mob wife. I, uh, I think that's it'd be it. a good one. Could you put a hit on somebody? If could I put a hit on? I think I do in my brain several times yeah, a day. Everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a lover, not a fighter, yeah, but gotcha. I got a sharp tongue. Yeah. I've got one more for you and I don't understand it. So you got to hit me with the story. <clears throat> Pray for Rick Durhaj. <laughs> Golfy reduced him to bench advertisements. Uh, <laughs> the fuck does that mean? He's he's a, a Niagara Falls realtor. Okay. And uh, I think he usually had a billboard in the Niagara Falls Chippewa area. And I guess he hasn't had, I guess, I, I don't know. Like, I, I know Rick. He's a good guy. And uh, I, feel, I feel bad that, you know, they're referring him as he's, downsized to bench bench signs i don't know but yeah like it's uh <laughs> i'm not familiar i will tell you this i don't i don't want to name drop anyone i, I wouldn't want to give them the business but we have a running joke that scott benson must have been hit by a bus because he's got his face on so many of them we figure it's part of a settlement oh, there you go yeah he probably got some money <laughs> or he saw my buses too many buses that i have he his- and he, he stepped it up a bit says hey golfies in town look out Direct you know, competition. That's it. Yeah. You know, whenever my kids see the bus, they read it out. Oh, they is that love right? It. Yeah. And I've convinced them that you work see that? for me. So that's the, gen- see that young generation? Mm-hmm. They're my future clients. Absolutely. See that? I, I'm, I'm embedding golfy name into their head. So when they, when they are ready to buy, guess what? They're going to call golfy. Or that's why or Lindsay, you got to get some buses out there. Mom, right? You got to, you got to get, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, you got to get some buses out there. Yeah, well, I was as big as a bus, so we'll work on that as we're going through it. But do these mean tweets hurt your feelings? No, because you know what? I, I'll tell you, they would have hurt my feelings many years ago, but now I don't give a shit. You know what? They could say what they want. But but at, the younger you are, the more you've, you're kind of sensitive to it. Mm-hmm. But now... Bring him on. Yeah, I think I'd be really sensitive to yeah. it. I, think it would yeah. I don't need to. I don't know. I don't think you're sensitive. Are you sen- Are you sensitive lady? <sighs> I don't know. I, d- I don't want to be harshly judged no, by well, my peer group. But you're an Aries now. Aries are, Aries are sensitive. Mm-hmm. And they can be hard. They can be harsh. They can they can they can come back at you with some some heavy uh, artillery with words. Uh, I think that that's it. We. Yeah. You know, I you take two steps back after it's already coming. Oh yeah, when it's coming at you, you're ready to fire off. You're ready to fire off some some tough words. We got a mutual release this weekend, which means for everyone that's listening, the buyers decided they don't want the house, and I said that's fine. Can you can you tell me why? I need some. I got to call someone that's going to be pissed off, and he said it's none of your business. And I said, listen here, you little fucker, you didn't. (laughs) It is my business. You didn't have a. It's none of your business clause in your contract. And as soon as it was out of my mouth, I thought, well, they're never going to tell me now. I burnt that bridge. So, anyways. They'll be, they'll be uh, getting their money back and everything That's will odd. be fine. But you know, it's that more of honey versus vinegar No, situation. There's no sense fighting those. There's no sense fighting them. Just let them loose and sell it to somebody else. It's just otherwise you just, it's just. Let it, them go. It, drag it out. That's it. So. You got one for me, don't you? Yeah. So 
So we have one here, and this came in. It says, and this is this is probably last week's uh, discussion. It said, "Go, this is go fuck yourself." This is to you. They're I telling think. me to go fuck it myself. Says, go fuck yourself. LOL. Harsh. Poor Scott, which is your husband, mm. just trying to catch a flick and eat some sn uh, snacks with his wifey. So I guess uh, you were really uh, trashing Scott la uh, last week or the week before. So I think that was about, we were talking about um, our concentration. Oh, our 30 minute uh, movies. And why I don't want to yeah. sit for two hours and watch robots fight aliens in a movie where everybody's white and I can't keep track of which guy is which. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this. God bless Scott. She's poor Scotty. Scotty hasn't had to match his socks in over 10 years. Yeah. So poor Scotty, my ass. Um, hey, that didn't hurt as much as I thought it would. No, okay. no. There you go. There oh, you I go. like that. There's going to be more coming. You yeah? know that. Oh, yeah. There'll be more coming. <sighs> so so hang on and, and embrace and, 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 and get on that. You're going to be on that ride of, of listening to some mean tweets. That's for sure. Well, help me get but, a bus. We'll see but, where it goes. But so... Um, Back to like Scott, mm -hmm. like um, I've been watching some of your videos. So I'm, I'm trying to, there's, there's two guys on your team. One's your husband. Yes. There's another, they almost look like Identical? brothers. Like um, what, what, like I didn't know which one was your husband. Well, the tall one. Okay. Our joke is that I got, I got one big, one little. Looks like you put them in the dryer and they came out separately. <laughs> um, and yeah, these, these are, these so are So your husband's boys. the taller one. My husband is the taller one. Frank is the shorter one. And if you're from this neighborhood, everybody knows Frank. Frank sold phones at the mall for oh, like 15 oh, years. Oh, no kidding. How'd it's, you scoop him up? Um, we've been friends forever. We've helped his family move. Obviously he was like my cell phone plug, which is like, you, know, you need a guy for everything. Yeah, and I think yeah. he was a lot of people's guy on that front. His brother now has that position. So no kidding. If you need a hookup with your, uh, yeah. everything they, you'll, they'll I go to this, I go to the same guy myself at Limeridge mall, the T booth guy. Okay. In, in Frank would have been there in the last 10 years. Oh, he walked oh I probably know him. You probably do. No kidding. He would know me because I'm always going in can you fix this and all this kind of stuff. And, and one of the reasons that I knew that there's there's different types of salespeople, right? And these boys would contact us to say, you know, there's something coming out for home internet. You want to take a look to revise and edit. Oh wow! And you have to say, holy fuck! If you're standing in the middle of the mall and you've got that kind of yeah. gustva, yeah. Like, this is excellent for us. So no. Frank's not been six months in. He's done two purchases. He's done three leases, Good and he's got uh, two completely organic listings in the works. Nice. So I like him. He's uh, producing slightly higher than Scott right now. Oh, is that right? But that's because yeah. we're coming off a of Christmas. Yeah, no, still. you know what? It, 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 the things are getting going. So I did look at some of the numbers. We're pretty well um, on track to doing uh, last January's numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so that all the final numbers aren't completely in. So we'll have that. And uh, the uh, average sale price is up a little bit from January of last year. So things are, are looking good, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And I do feel that, um, you know, the market this year is still going to be a little bit uh, uh, flat, uh, not crazy, which is good for the buyers. And, and, and same thing with sellers, getting uh, ridiculous amounts of money for their house and then not closing, uh, that, which happened a lot, especially in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Not as much. I don't think it happened as much in Hamilton as it did in Toronto. Or I'm not sure. How was, how was Burlington? Did you see that a lot? I, don't, I didn't see that. No. I, I, personally, knock on wood, yeah. I have never had a non-closing situation. Yeah. I think it depends on the, the price and the market that you're dealing with. Um, and it's interesting, you know, if you've got $7 million to spend on a house, you can be pretty fucking fussy. And yeah. I also oh, look yeah. at inventory. Like you, when you say that the market is flat, I, I run a lot of my numbers week over week. Yeah. So we haven't had, we've only had one 500 piece inventory week from Burlington to Niagara so far this year. Every other week we've had under 500 new listings come to market. And so anybody that's thinking they want to sell their house, they need to move somewhere so else. So you, you track... How I track many weekly. how many new listings came on board mm -hmm. from Burlington all the way to Niagara? Correct, and it and it works out to usually around five hundred. Well, that's actually, I, I didn't know that. that that's actually of, pretty spring good. Spring of last year, we were waiting for our thousand dollar or our thousand piece week, and it came probably in the beginning of June. Um, a thousand listings in a one thousand week. listings in one week in that geographical area. And the reason we're watching this is because for our seller clients, it's important to know how many people came to market and how many of them actually moved. Right. Right. And we're looking at this on a really 
considering our trading area, it's a pretty macro scale. But for the boys who are mostly representing buyers, when their buyers are hitting their heads against the wall, we want to show them, well, that's because we're not even selling half of what's coming to market. Right, right. right? We also look at what's expired and canceled on a weekly basis because those are the saddest people, right? Those yeah. people didn't sell their fucking oh, no shit. after days and days. So uh, we look at it as a, as a weekly run. I will tell you this. I had a slower year last year because I thought I should spend some time with these fucking kids, right? And I'm going to stay home with them. I'm going to mold their little minds. And we came out of that year and, and we subsisted and we sold considerably less than our 2021, naturally. Yeah, everybody did. Um, yeah. And they're still shitty. So what I learned was I'm going to go back to work this year um, because... Maybe you'll... Yeah. Yeah, having two parents home at bedtime did not affect their so, personalities so, at all. So when teachers are watching, your kids' teachers are watching this, mm -hmm. what do you think they're going to say? Say, my fucking kids. They're going to say, those <laughs> fosters are good-looking kids. God, they're pieces of shit. Yeah. No, they're a lot. I will tell you this. Last weekend, this was a whirlwind weekend, mm -hmm. and I'm going to check my privilege because there's a lot of families who would have loved to yeah. do these yeah. things. But we did uh, Great Wolf Lodge. We, we spoke about yeah. that last yeah. week. Yeah. It's disgusting. Then we had a bowling party. It was a Christmas gift from an uncle. So okay. we did a bowling party. And I'm, I'm like a pretty mean bowler. Like I should yeah. get a shirt. Um, and then the following day, we had a birthday party at Laser Tag. There's a laser tag in, in There's a laser tag that? on Upper James. Oh, wow. And it's been there since I was little. And I was having deja vu. I was like, I was here. Is, for it, is that like in a big warehouse? Like, what's laser tag? It's exactly what you're envisioning. It's black lights and smoke machines. I didn't go in. There were enough dads. Thank God. I didn't want to run through there. But all this to say, I had the most, like, sensory weekend. The noise. Um, I, without my glasses, I can't see yeah, shit. So yeah. you get to Great Wolf Lodge, take my glasses off. Everybody's you a You can't blur. hear. You can't see. I, I'm having, like, a full handicap trying no, to make no my way through this park. So I went for a stretch. I go to a place on Ottawa Street called the Move Room. And I was mentioning to them, I really needed this, this fucking stretch. I can feel Great Wolf Lodge <laughs> in my shoulder blades, for Christ's <laughs> sakes. Um, I don't have the planter's warts yet. I'm sure they're coming. But anyways, everybody there was telling me about loop headphones. Have you heard of this? No. Okay. What's that? S buckle up. For the one-time price of about $80, loop headphones. you can have an earplug. It's not a headphone. It's an earplug that is frequency deafening. Can you, can you imagine this? So, so with d frequency deafening. So you don't hear anything else. You'll hear a, Hey, you, yeah, you might hear the music. Yeah. It helps you focus on what you want to focus on. And I guess the way that they've designed this, the engineering behind it, one girl says she sits beside the printer at work and it, it gives her anxiety listening to this hum all day. So she paid eighty dollars. Sticks these things in her ear, and the hum goes away entirely. No shit. And so they all, a couple of them at the at the workout room, popped them in. And I thought, God, that's fucking ugly. You look like you got shit sticking out of your ears. So I'm currently waffling between: do I do I want to be the social pariah that's wearing public consumption earplugs? Well, you can put those on, and nobody would know you have any earplugs on. So you got long hair. I could, I could, I'd have to put my hair in front of my ears, yeah. but it made me think about you because, you know, in the ADHD hemisphere and concentrating and I wonder, do you use anything like that? I should, I probably should take some pills sometimes. <laughs> I, uh, I, I probably, I probably do need them because, um, the energy level that I have, it, it, it's, I, like, I, I'm thinking, okay, as I'm getting older, will I, is my energy level, you know, dropping down? And I, I don't know. I, I, I do feel that I'm probably down just a, probably a couple of percentage points. Um, and everybody here knows in the office, I run up and down the stairs at my office and like all the time. Like I don't just walk up them like slow. I run up them. I, I take two steps, every second step going down. Okay. And it's just, it's just the way I am. I speed, even though I'm not in a rush. Um, I like walk fast and, um, uh, and then when somebody's trying to explain something to me, uh, I I sometimes accidentally people notice this. Sometimes I'll walk away from the conversation because I'm I, I'm I got my mind on something else. Stop it! 
<laughs> I'm like, and then somebody says, Rob, you just walked away from that conversation. I go, really? I thought he was done. Uh, maybe there was a pause there and I thought he was done. So I walked away. <laughs> you heard it here first. You better that's keep it. him entertained that's or he's it. turning it. on his So heel. I walk, yeah, literally. Like, I'm, And I found out that I'm, maybe I'm doing this more often now than I ever did before. But when there's somebody's got a pause, well, like, how long is the, like the pause yeah. must have been pretty long that I thought it was over with. How dare you breathe if you're speaking yeah, to yeah, Rob Golfy? But, uh, but yeah, no. And, um, uh, but anyway, well, I wonder if those headphones and I wonder if anyone on your team is using them. Cause these people were super fans. I got to check it out. And I thought, I don't want to stick shit in my ears. It's kind of weird. But the, the idea of like uh, being able to hone in on what you're actually listening to, do you ever like notice your shoulders start to raise when you're getting annoyed? And like, mm. I wonder if this would cancel out. I, 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 I but, uh, it, it, I think it would probably work because I know they have the noise canceling things if you're on, on, on the airplane, if mm -hmm. you want to do that. But the one thing is, speaking of those like uh, earphones or whatever, I cannot find one that can just stick in my ear and stay there. Too, I have, are you I have too to get, big I, or too small, Rob? I don't know. <laughs> I, have, I think I have to get something that rolls over my ears so they stay there. Like mm -hmm. I always end up losing those little buds, pods or whatever you call them that go in your ear. They never stay. Mm -hmm. And and I and I try to get the right little rubber thing on the end to fit in, in my ear. It just does not work. And uh, I'm just, so never get, like I have to wear like big things that go around my ears oh, oh. that look like I have ear, hear, like the old old school hearing aids. Now they got hearing aids now that uh, apparently you can't even see people have them mm -hmm. on. But I have to get the old school hearing aids kind of um, so that uh, if I'm walking or doing anything, I don't I don't lose them, and I and I end up dropping them all the time and and losing them. I I, I lost one in my car. I got like these. I can't even. I'm go, I'm bringing the seat back and forth. How does this thing just this thing just walk out of my car or and what? They're not cheap either. No, I'm a technology denier. Scott Scott lives for it for a host of reasons, um, but. I, uh, someone got me an Apple. Scotty got me an Apple Watch, mm -hmm. and I said, "You know, when these come on a gold and diamond chain, bring it back to yeah. me." In the meantime, I'm, I'm not wearing this fucking shit, and you got to remember to charge all this stuff and plug it in and where it is, and it, it's so too I looked much, at too much technology. Even these headphones that people had, I said, "What? What if you lose one and you're eighty dollars deep for another yeah. set?" Ah. You, you know what I really want? Mm. Um, I think Facebook came up with this: um, the 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 glasses that you can record. Oh, the Ray Vans, the yeah, Metas. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. Can, like I, I, but do they have like clear glasses or it's just suntan? Like, are they just like sunglasses? Oh. I, I really want to get those because sometimes it's good to go to uh, an appointment and you learn from your appointment mm -hmm. and can learn the reaction of somebody's face when you say something like, like you, like. It, it, could, it may not be a big reaction, but just their eyes move. Like you may say something and, um, and then all of a sudden they, they react to that and you may not notice it, but if you play it back, you go, oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that or maybe I should have added that to it. Like, I, I think it's a great learning tool having the glasses. But do you think that they built that because they wanted to like hit a spy vein, like what you're talking about? I'm gonna wear these glasses in so I can watch this back or I'm surveilling. I saw them as they made these for parents that didn't have two hands for their phones. And I saw them more as like a lifestyle recording device. I, I you know, you're I, at Disney yeah. World, you pop these bad boys on, you can record your entire you, vacation. Yeah, no kidding. Actually, I, I didn't even think of that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, because you, you don't have to have a phone going like this, you know, holding a phone up. But I, I don't know. I, I just, I look at it as, uh, I mean, everybody's got different things. People look at it as a spy thing mm -hmm. or like, or catching somebody you know, it's like in the U.S., you always see these uh, police pulling people over and, and abusing their power. Sure. And, and people, you know, yeah. people, you know, recording them and then they realize, oh, shit, I'm in trouble because, you know, I think I think it's good to, you know, catch people. Um, Did you see what they cost? I think they're $500, yeah, I, I think. I think that's what I saw, too. Yeah. I think it was U.S. So well, but where do you get, where can you get these things? You order them straight from Ray-Ban. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. So, so they connected with Ray Ban. So Ray Ban must be killing it with this stuff. I, I got to check else, it out. Who else would they pick if you're yeah, going to go with yeah, someone you know for what? that yeah, technology? Yeah. yeah, they're not going to go with Gucci because nobody's going to look up Gucci for those. Well, and if, and they're and they'd be too expensive. Five five hundred is a couple of people buying you a Christmas gift, but this yeah, is it, right? It's yeah. still considered uh, that's a twenty twenty four accessible I, price point. Yeah, no, but I I think I I I actually you know because we're talking about it now, I'm going to look into it because I I I want it for learning. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt, but I but but I'm just waiting till they have a second 
uh, generation of it or third generation sure. once they mastered it more, you know, they'll say, Hey, you know, the technology gets better almost every th- six months or every three months. So mm-hmm. I want to wait till they, till they had them a few times and they got some bad and good feedback from it and what they can improve on it. That's, that, that's what I'm waiting. I always, I hate buying the very first one. I you know what that. I mean? Like I, I just, because I know once it's been out, they can improve it because of everybody trying it. I mean, they do test runs themselves, but not enough to like, as the public would do and, and the public, you know, with the feedback, they would probably say, yeah, we should do this or. Well, and the PR that comes out, like, cause I, I, I got this on Instagram as well is where I saw these glasses first and the PR they're doing is obviously so one-sided. So they, let's say they send a thousand pairs of glasses to people that are already supporting Ray-Ban and getting paid for it yeah. and who are in the online hemisphere. So you're not going to see a bad report no, yet. No, you, but you know what else is fun about that is I'm thinking about some of the times if I had these glasses on, I remember one time I had an elderly woman and I had her house for sale and, and there was a timeline I had to get her to sign something. She knew I was going to, come to her house this and and have signed something so she calls me in a frantic and said rob um i i fell and uh you need to get here before they come if you want me to sign this paperwork and i'm like holy smokes so i hop in my car and i race there and uh like and this is good for like like playback for fun stuff to put online so I race there and, and she's just getting on the stretcher, oh right? God. As I'm walking in, two ambulance guys go in there and say, hey, who are you? And I go, I'm a real estate agent, right? And her, uh, her uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, her, the, these paramedic guys go, what, what the hell is this guy doing here? Like, like really, you don't care about this a lady? Literal you need, you need her to, yeah. you, need, you need her to sign something? And um, so anyway, um, but yeah, so I, uh, yeah, she was all for it and, uh, she signed it and, uh, and the guys must've thought what a, what an idiot, what, like what, a, what a jerk. He's more worried about the money. Do you think that's your weirdest paperwork signing story? No, I had one, I was in the hospital and you uh, were in the hospital. No, I actually, I had a lady, she was at St. Peter's hospital. Okay. Okay. Now if you're at St. Peter's hospital, it's a hospice, you are dying. Yeah, you're dying. You are dying. So I, um, and the kids, um, uh, you know, called me and we listed the house and put it up for sale we had an offer we were overpriced we had an offer and she's in saint peter's hospital and i take the offer to her and she wouldn't take it like it was like it was a great price Mm -hmm. it wasn't the price that she got and the kids are telling her ma just take it this lady's gonna die within a week she can't spend it no and she's like fighting for every penny (laughs) and and I go, okay, no problem. So that deal didn't come together. When she died after the funeral, kids told me, Rob, put this house at the price that you suggested and let's get this thing sold. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, like there's people, I knew a lawyer, he was still doing paperwork at the ho- at, at, at St. Peter's Hospital. He was still had files. He was there right to the end. Some people, yeah. Working like, through it. I'll, yeah. give you, I'll give you one. I had a house for sale and we received an offer. Um, and I called my client and his dad answered. He's just not here right now. Um, he's in jail. And I said, well, that might be crappy for some people, but I live three blocks away from Barton street prison. <laughs> Let me get over there right now. So I print all of this paperwork. It gets better. I should, I, I leave in a rush. Okay. I, I'm thinking I got 20 minutes before yeah. this guy gets yeah. booked. So I throw on dirty Uggs, this huge Amazon puffer jacket in fire engine red. I run to the general or not the general Barton street prison, excuse me, beside the general. And I realize I have to wait in line. So I'm standing in line with a lot of ladies who are there to visit their significant others. Oh, no shit. And walking past me, like the day is long, lawyer after lawyer, wow. lady lawyer. And all I could think was if I had to put shoes and a nice jacket on, I would have walked right through here. I waited for three hours. To get through. To get admitted into the. Why? Because I, I wasn't, I looked, well, I looked like hell. 
And just because you didn't look like a lawyer, I wasn't with high telling heels. the right story. And I'm going, I have documents. I need my client to wow. sign them. Uh, they could have just kicked me right off the property. And I eventually got it signed. And and from that day forward, I've I've never worn that jacket again. No kidding. I threw those Uggs in the garbage. And thankfully, I have not been back to Barton Street Prison. I've never been inside there. How is it? Is it pretty? Like, well, they don't were, really let you. Were, were, were you able to like? Do you have to talk to him behind the glass? I didn't even get to see him. No? I had to send paperwork up to get signed and witnessed by a guard to get sent back oh, down. Oh, so you didn't even see him? No, I didn't. He beat the no shit kidding. out of his wife the day before. Oh. We weren't getting anything. Oh, this no is, kidding. We needed to sell this house and get wow. it over with. Wow. When it was all said and done, it didn't come together. It got sent to bank sale, by the way. I knew a guy. Um, he did, um, what did he do? He did uh, like renovation work and stuff. Like he was, um, uh, and he spent time in jail at the Barton jail. And it just so happens he was wrongfully arrested, but he ended up spending probably, I think, eight, nine months there. Wow. And, uh, but he's been in jail before. He was, he was an ex-biker. And so anyway, <laughs> so, so this guy, he said he actually was in, uh, in jail. Uh, there, there was a mobster in jail too. And uh, he would, and it was funny, the stuff that he would tell me about what's going on i, I bet the social oh, well, sh and that prison in particular is co-ed there's oh ladies, really there's ladies and men there. so do you think there's a lot of action going on like uh, i have uh, a guys feeling guys and girls i think uh, they keep them pretty separated but like i was it's, surprised it's not a mi that. they don't mix up like a dance in the like you know at the yeah. high school dance well, <laughs> every, every friday like, night that's like petty crime 101 right yeah like these, these are these are grocery store thieves no and, no no? So, no i think that's a holding area until they uh, get sent elsewhere. Yeah, I, I I don't think it's a jail like, like I think it's short term jail. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think it's like I mean anything. I think it's uh, well maybe you're right. If it's over three years, you go to Kingston. Yes. But if it's uh, less, but then they have the Milton jail. Yeah. But the Hamilton jail, I I think it's just a holding area until your trial comes or whatever. Like let's say if you're arrested and you're not getting bail, well you're gonna you're you're sit you're, you're, you're gonna sit there until um your your trial is or your hearing or whatever and um yeah I, I don't i don't know i don't know it's not like i've been there before did you know me either thank <laughs> god but did you know there is a second prison in the city so i found this out roundabout way oh. west fifth up on the corner of west fifth across from mohawk at oh, the psychiatric facility. Yeah. And you know how I found this out? I was doing a fin track and I asked the gentleman, what do you do? He said, I am a locksmith. I said, wonderful. And out of curiosity, yeah. what company do you yeah. work for? Yeah. I like to chat it out. He says, I designed all of the timed locking mechanisms for the criminally insane ward at West 5th. I said, the what? There's bougie houses up there. You're across from a fucking private so, school, so 30K that's, a year. So that's not just... The insane is also the criminally, criminally insane. insane. And they're, are they, they're in the same, like, same hospital. Same building, obviously different doors with yeah. some heavy-duty flipping locks on them. No kidding. So move to Hamilton, everyone. We got it all. Five That's hospitals, it. two prisons. Call it a day. You got to watch. And I, and I hear, you know, when uh, those people are in there, there's also a lot of, a lot of sex happening. Stop. There is. They, 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 they put them on these drugs, and the drugs make them... Orny. Really? I'm telling you. I'm telling. I'm I telling you. That from, a function, I mean, like recreation. listen. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. I. Uh, I'm they were like, I, I, that's what I was told. We could put up some basketball nets, or that's what give I was them told. all half of Viagra. And that's see it. where it takes us. That's it. Okay. Speaking of jail, you sent me a very funny TikTok. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't funny. It was just fucking stupid. Is what it that's was. That's great. That's a great excuse, though. Tell them about it. So I'm flipping through TikTok, and then I see this uh, uh, news guy. Uh, uh, talking about um, this lady got caught with cocaine in her purse. And she is telling the pe the police that it f flew in her purse because it was a windy day. It was a windy day. It wasn't hers. It, mm -hmm. it, it kind of, it flew into her purse. So, uh, <laughs> so that's the excuse she's making. And um, I'm thinking, how in pretty ingenious like i mean she might be able to i mean she's got a case they can't deny her of her excuse they just have to prove it it was a windy day that day i guess well and she played it up because the mug shot that they were using in this this clip she looked like she'd been in a tornado <laughs> but i was thinking to myself she really typecast that story right yeah i i could believe when i heard that i go you hear i mean that's 
it's crazy. So it blew in there. It, it, and I, I can't believe it. Like, I mean, mm. like, that's it. Like, yeah. like, like kilos of cocaine uh, blew into her purse. It's like, whoops. That <laughs> Sorry. was an accident. I, yeah, was, I'd like I to know what kind that of happens purse to everybody. it was. That happens to everybody. You have, that, that's never happened to you? It's no, literally. Nothing's blown into your purse? Nothing has blown into my purse. I'm trying to think, what would I do in that circumstance? First, I wouldn't be caught with a with, purse full of drugs. I'm smarter yeah. than that. They'd be in a locked <laughs> trunk. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> um, yeah, what a, what a quick way to think your way through that. Yeah. Oh, no what kidding. Mess. They should have yeah. shown the purse too. That would have made I would have liked to see the purse, how big it was. Right? But yeah, there's no way. She's not going to get away with it. She's no. done. She's going to be locked up for a while. She'll be locked up for a while. Well, and I, th- I wonder, if, I wonder, I think they were in Florida. Probably. I'm trying to run the wind variable yeah. here. Maybe like if, if it was a Kansas, tornado. If there was a tornado. If it's hurricane season yeah. in Florida. Say, so, yeah, sure. Yeah, that could happen. You've got Kansas yeah. and you're in, the, in yeah. a prairie. Yeah. It, it happened like to freaking uh, with a Dorothy on uh, Wizard <laughs> of Oz. I mean, she was blowing around with little Toto. That's my family's favorite movie. That's a scary movie. It's a scary fucking movie. I don't, I'm telling you, when I was a kid, like, I don't know why it was such a big deal to watch this thing. All the kids were watching it. I w- that was a terrifying movie to watch for a kid. Like all, like parents back then in that genera- like generation, like I'm older than you are. No. Just a little bit. Are you really? Just a little bit. <laughs> Shit. Just okay. a little bit. But, uh. but I'm telling you, like, like they don't even play the Wizard of Oz anymore, do they? No, they turned it into a children's cartoon. But you're right, it's pretty scary. But I remember the novelty of like it. Like the freaking flying monkeys? Scary. But you know when they changed the color? Oh, because, it was black and white. Because they started filming it in yeah. black and white, yeah. and then color film became available, right. and they made this part of the storyline. I always remember as a child being like so flabbergasted. No kidding. So that was an original black and white movie. They started and in they black added and the white. color after the tech. Well, the technology came through when they were wow. doing production. No kidding. And I'm like pretty average height. I'm like yeah. a five two. I wear yeah. a heel often, and yeah. I live with a six four and change. And right. I just I call him my tall friend because I I can't reach. Yeah. And he puts stuff in the weirdest fucking places yeah. things we use every day i'll have to get a step stool to those, get down the, those washrooms that have the angled uh one angled sh- uh oh, the mirror no there's you know in the in the bathtub and then there's an angle because it's probably steps going up ah. and then you know you have to kind of bend your and get around yeah it get around and uh i uh i can't even get into those showers I actually own a property that has a shower like that. And I tell him, I go, are you okay with this? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This bathroom with this shower? Because you're going to have to, you know, tilt your head or, or have high pressure to go on to reach you. Well, and a lot of people will say, it's no problem. I'll put like a rain head in. I'm renovating anyways. And I yeah. remind them like a rain head still sits four inches down. So if, you, if you've got that limited ceiling yeah. height. Yeah. No, uh, it's, you know. Check anyway. the showers, people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're sho- tall. Shower. You know, you know what? Showers are important. There's no doubt about it. When uh, when you're going in a house in the bathroom, you know the the mold. Uh, some people don't clean their mold. I just definitely is is it an issue for me when I'm when I'm looking at it. It's the first thing I look at. Mm-hmm. I tell people I go scrape all that and see if you can you know recock it and get rid of the mold and stuff like that. I said there's people have a cleansiness out there. Some people don't, but I think most people do, and they don't want to see that. And I think if they clean it, it's uh, it's all good. Well, the cleanest houses are the ones that sell first always. That's it's your it. duty of care. And if you don't like what you're seeing on the surface, you can only imagine what's below it, right? So we're almost out of time. What do you got going on this week? Hmm, let's see. We had over 25 unrepresented visitors across three open houses this weekend. No kidding. So we are in a buyer blitz. We yeah, met yeah. so many amazing new people yeah, that are looking yeah. for help. So we're doing a lot of that this week. And um, yeah, decent sensitizing myself from a weekend full of childhood hellscapes yeah what about uh, you no uh just working on finishing up the burlington uh office uh that's all getting fin- we were supposed to have the opening today really yeah and it, and we had to reschedule and uh so that's happening um uh, this week officially for sure because we i know where the the finish line is and uh but yeah it was a bummer that it you know it didn't happen uh uh today and it's just because of the the wallpaper uh the person that ordered the wallpaper didn't order enough so we had kind of had a a, a hold off on the glass person hold off on this person hold off on everything so the one person that messed up and i was a little disappointed i i didn't lose my shit i just basically said you know like we got to be a little bit smarter than that like i mean you're in this business like order the right amount of 
Wallpaper. This is a GC's nightmare, yeah. So absolutely. we had to get it from uh, from North Carolina and, and wait till it shipped to Canada. I, I was ready to freaking have somebody go down there and get it and have a tr- twenty four hour turnaround, but it took a five day turnaround. So that, anyway. we've we've had a property sitting waiting for windows for two weeks. Uh, There's still four weeks out. You know how it is. Everyone's yeah. lined up and you got yeah. a stop gap. Yeah. So, so a new office. When is this opening then? So it's a it's a, a soft opening with just the agents that live in Burlington, and it's going to happen Friday. So we wanted to make sure everything was done. The blinds are up, uh, the glass is all done, the wallpaper's up, all the pictures on the walls and the decorative, everything's all done. The desks are in there already. They're it's all ready to go. Like I'm it's, fucking jealous. I yeah, I want yeah. a project. Uh, well, like we'll that. have a coffee there. I got a nice coffee machine. Beautiful. Yeah, a nice Italian coffee machine. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, oh, I love it. Okay, my next week, I'm finding an office. There you go, everybody. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Take care. Ciao.